Okay, we've got a case scenario here. So here we go. You've got a patient who's septic, who's got pneumonia, who's intubated. And now let's check out their monitor. You can see the heart rate is 112. The blood pressure is 78 over 45 with a map of 56. So let's stop there and ask ourselves, do we need to do something? All right, so now we're trying to decide fluid versus presser. Like which way do we go with this patient? The patient's already gotten three liters of fluid, so I definitely don't want to fluid overload them. So the question I'm asking now is, are they preload responsive? And to answer that question, we need to measure some sort of a stroke volume measure, and we're going to pair that with a passive leg raise test. So now we're going to non-invasively measure the patient's stroke volume. So we've placed patches above the heart and below the heart, basically making a box around the heart. So in two phases, the patient's stroke volume is going to be calculated. So let's take a look. All right, so now with the head of the bed up and the legs straight, we're gonna get a baseline stroke volume. And I like to look at stroke volume index because it takes into consideration the patient's body surface area. Starting with the stroke volume index of 61. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the patient's head and passively lift the legs, taking that blood volume in their legs and lower abdomen and kind of giving the patient a physiologic fluid bolus using their own blood. And in the literature that equates to about the equivalent of a 300 ml bolus. All right, so now we're gonna passively lift the legs. It's important that it's passive. So we're gonna lift yeah, the yeah, legs. Yeah. And now we're taking the blood volume from the legs and lower abdomen and kind of pushing it back through the heart. Okay, we have our reading after lifting the legs. And what we're seeing is that the stroke volume index increased by 19%. So that indicates that our patient's gonna be preload or fluid responsive. Now it doesn't tell us how much fluid we could give, only that the patient's gonna be responsive to fluid, meaning their stroke volume is going to increase when a fluid bolus is given or fluid challenge is given. So, And then if the stroke volume index did not change by at least 10%, then I would have either started or increased the vasopressor if the patient was already on one. So just to, you know, again, we've gotta be smart about fluid at the bedside. Fluid is not benign and we've just got to be giving patients fluid when they need it.